Welcome to the VoiceOver Sermon with Terry Daniel, the podcast for voiceover artists with tons of handy tips, tricks, and useful information to help you run your voiceover business better. And now, here's your host, Terry Daniel. Good afternoon, everybody. Terry Daniel here with another exciting episode of VoiceOver Sermons. And I do mean exciting because, oh, Jan Anderson is (laughs) fine. You know, that's what VoiceOver Sermons is for. It's for power napping. (laughs) All right. Well, we got Rob back again. Uh, Jan, we've been trying to get you on for two years, but we, you know, I guess if we, I always call you on your landline phone at four in the morning. I've been trying to sleep, Terry. I have to sleep all day. never available. Jan is a fabulous coach. He does a lot of, well, you do a lot of script coaching too, but you're, you're yeah. kind of known for doing our recording setup room treatment sessions. So maybe briefly kind of tell us, like if I'm a new student and I, uh, I have you on the calendar for Friday, what am I going to expect in a session like that with you? Okay, sure. Um, well, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll confirm the, the booking and then I always reach out via email to for every single um, session. So you'll get an email from me and I'll confirm your date and all that stuff. And then I'll I'll ask you, you know, do you currently have a recording set up at home? Are you just getting started? Are you somewhere in between? I, I need to, you know, find out where, where we're going to start to find out where we're going to go. Right. So uh, then that starts the conversation. And if it's a brand new person, then cool. We'll start at the beginning. I'll ask if they've chosen a good spot in their home to dedicate to recording. Um, if they're so, sort of in between or if they've already got a studio set up, then we'll move on to doing things like uh, sending me pictures of their uh, recording setup and I'll send them a script and a and directions for recording uh, an audio sample. And then, um, then I'll get straight on to an audio analysis where I will... T- go through their audio and with a fine tooth comb and, yeah. and, and know what, what, uh, and see, give them feedback as to what I'm hearing. But if they are starting at the very beginning, we will start there. We'll have a zoom session. I'll look at pictures of the area where they want or are thinking about putting their recording space. And then we'll go through the options of, well, what's your, what's your neighborhood like? What kind of noise are you getting from outside your home? What kind of noise are you getting from inside your home? Um, What's your budget like? What kind of a setup do you want to have? You know, that kind of thing. What, um, you know, just basic questions like that so that we can start really diving into a solution that will benefit them personally for their situation. You know, I mean, if they live in New York City and there's tons of street noise, buses and stuff all the time, well, you're going to have a hard time without a an ISO booth. You know, that's just kind of the long and short of it. But there are options until you can afford one. Uh, but if you live in a nice, quiet neighborhood in the suburbs and you want to have a nice, large space, well, you could either c- dedicate a whole room uh, to, as a, uh, or treat a whole room to be able to have a nice spacious place to work, or you can build something like a blanket booth, which is what I'm recording in right now. And it's working out great. Yeah, while I'm and kind it of sounds in, really in, good. It sounds like you're in an actual VO booth. I kind of, and I don't even have it completely closed up, you know, but, um, so anyway, so there are many options. We just need to find the right solution for the for the individual, and then, um, then there's a second. There's a there's for those who are just beginning. There's a follow up session where, mm-hmm. um, if I haven't, if they didn't have any audio for me to analyze in the first place, then they'll come back to me when they're ready, when they think they've dialed it in as as well as they can on their own. Then I'll send them a script and directions for recording an audio sample. They'll send that to me and I'll, I'll do that analysis and send them my feedback. And I'll give them the thumbs up and say, hey, you're ready to work and audition and all that stuff sounds great, go for it. Or I'll say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm hearing this in the background in the noise floor, or you may want to try a different mic technique. Maybe you're addressing the microphone a little, you know, oddly or backwards. Who knows? Right. Uh, oh, but uh, yeah, oh, yeah, everybody has. <laughs> and so then I just get them to the point where, you know, if they're diligent and they're willing to work at it, because, you know, as we all know, it just takes a lot of personal trial and error to, you know, get 
get set up. Well, and, and, and patience, t- patience is stuff that's really challenging with people because people just get they you know they just they get so fixated on on buying the gear and then they want to get going and then you know two yeah. days later they want to be able to record something. Believe right. me, even you know along with script performance, this type of stuff, you should never be in a hurry. You have to get it right. There's a learning curve, you know, that not only yeah. about about setting up your your equipment, but also placing your microphone in the optimal position for you in your space. And then there's also getting used to the functionality of whatever your DAW, your recording software is. Yeah. You know, it. most of us, you know, after spending some time, we're fluid with it. We just go from one thing to the next, boop, 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 you know, easy peasy. But there's a learning curve to it. And, uh, and, and it takes a while. It just takes a while. What is the biggest issue too? Like if somebody you know has maybe there's a little bit of room noise or there's some kind of a bounce. Mm-hmm. What is the number one issue that people usually have when they're not you know obviously they're not going to be quite there a hundred percent. But what's a common problem that that kind of arises? Sure. Um, sometimes uh, sometimes it's something very easy, and th- and that is the fact that people people in general that haven't been into <sighs> recording and things like that for a long time they they aren't used to listening for things that they're used to hearing. In other words, their brain has has almost numbed them to the fact that their refrigerator makes noise or right. that there's noise present when their air conditioner is running or, you know, things like that. So much of the time when I'm listening to audio samples and there's a there's a noise floor issue, it's because the air conditioner was running or um, I could hear another appliance of some kind or unfortunately they have you know a budget computer that creates a lot of fan noise especially when it's running a robust program like a daw that requires a lot of resources to run well the mm-hmm. the fan will kick in and you know then i'll say hey i i'm hearing this i think it's i i can narrow down what frequencies i'm hearing but right. usually that that doesn't you know that doesn't matter speaking, to a lot of people but speaking of daw I, f- I find it rather amusing sometimes because you know there's myths on social media or blogs about what the industry standard is when it comes to your daw uh, for here first of all for those of you that are just getting into voiceovers there is no industry standard on this you use the recording software that you're most comfortable with. A client isn't going to turn you away because you used Audacity no. instead of Pro Tools. No. And, you know, it's the gear and treatment of your recording space that makes up your sound. The software has nothing to do with it. So if you have a well-treated space with decent gear, the audio you get from Audacity will sound exactly the same as Pro Tools. I just, I get tired of this content that I read online sometimes. Oh, it's the industry standard. Well, who said that? You? You? industry standard what is the you know it's whatever you're comfortable with yeah it's that it has more to do with the bells and whistles the editing tools and tricks of that particular platform those are the differences yeah the features but uh, but when it comes down to the digital recording yeah no it's all ones and zeros it really is yeah and it's like i know i get that you know the pro tools is the coolest software to have but it's just like you know you do see this in blogs like well you have to have pro tools if you want to be taken seriously i have not had one client during the course of my entire career which has been a very long time now ever once ask me what i was using to record no, not yeah, once. No, it, it doesn't I'm an, matter. I, hey, and full full disclosure, I'm an Audacity user, thick yeah. and you know through and through, and and have been since the beginning. I've tried. Well, a then bunch you of must them. you must have spyware on your computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, let's go. not even oh, go God. there. Let's talk about, you know, there was a, you know, you know, it's again, we've got some hyperbolic fodder going on in the forums on social media where somebody wants to cancel Audacity now because there was a rumor about yeah. their new privacy changes. Jan, what do you yeah. know about that? And can we well, dispel that myth right now once and for all? Yeah, I'll do. I'll do it. Here's my nickel speech about that. There's a company that had has acquired the rights to the Audacity platform. Actually, they they acquired a whole bunch of things, and Audacity was one of them. And they're going to be making some privacy changes, mostly to find out from users when the when the product when the program is having issues when there fails when there are dropouts, things like that. So, um, so they're going to start collecting more data. And 
iterations of the software, in other words, newer versions that have not been released yet, will have some sort of connection to the internet so that they can maintain a connection with the user. That has not happened yet. It's not whoever put the word spyware on this is ridiculous. <laughs> Audacity isn't going to be any more like spyware, even to the point that Facebook and Google and all these other programs that everybody has no problem with. Oh, of course you know, not. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 silly. Everybody it, well, just it's got just, it's the the irony of people complaining about this, you know, alleged spyware on Facebook is quite comical. Yeah, it is. And <laughs> and there, there's a great yeah, it is. And there's a great uh, Facebook group called um, what is it? The VO uh, Audacity's the VO Audacity Users Group. That is moderated by one or two programmers for Audacity. Oh, that's it's cool. A, it's a it's a great group. And <clears throat> excuse me, there were some fantastic uh, discussions, a couple threads in there and uh, supporting articles to dispel all of the fear and all that stuff. But I'll tell you, you know, once yeah. once something goes out into the media about oh, spyware, God. then, God. you know, everybody's already in a panic. It's it's the buzzword. It's the it's the word spyware. You know, totally. it's like, oh, the gov big brother's watching you. It's like, well, it's the yeah, same, you know, once relax. a year, there's a panic on social media about, um, you know, Facebook sharing your private information with other entities, you know, it's the same yeah. kind of thing that comes up once a year. And believe me, even something with audacity within our voiceover community, I mean, that that thing spread like wildfire yeah. in, in about two days. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, fortunately, it's calming down. It's calming down pretty quickly. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, you know, don't worry about it. Well, that's, and, that's and, because and this... we have the best group and we've dispelled it. <laughs> well, of course, but but here's the other thing, um, you know, whenever a, a program like Audacity or another recording software or any other software for that matter that you rely on, when a new iteration of that comes out, like Audacity updates probably twice a year, you know, they change a few things, they tweak a few things, they make some improvements or whatever. Yeah, that doesn't mean that you have to update it right away. Right. So, oh, so God, for yeah. the new instances of Audacity that will be coming out, that will be having these new privacy uh, settings, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to download it. I'm still back, you know, several iterations into Audacity, you know, and it works great. You know, I don't, I, I don't yes, feel I don't, the need to update. Pardon my ignorance on Audacity because I'm an Adobe Audition snob. Ooh. But is uh, is uh, is Audacity a single track edit or is it multi track? It's single track in that you can only record one track at a time. Right. However, you can. There are there are many ways of of recording along with another track so that you're hearing one track in your headphones while you're recording a second track and you can layer tracks. So when I'm putting commercials or, you know, other projects together that are multi track with music and sound effects and multiple voices and stuff, I can do all that on Audacity. That's great. Well, that's good. Yeah, I didn't awesome. know that. Oh yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's powerful. Well, it's there's powerful so many tool. of them now. Just because you know, it, it's unbelievable. There's like thousands of different you know XLR mics that you can now use for voiceover. Now there's like how many different recording softwares out there? I mean, it's just it, it yeah. can be very overwhelming. But absolutely, you know, like we talked about a few minutes ago, you have to use what you're comfortable with. And and Audacity, as much as I, I do kind of like it, it's the, it's the platform, it's the look of it that my sure. brain that my brain just doesn't have a connection with. It yeah, has that it, kind and, of 90s era look to it, yeah. to the software. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, would be a good does, way to describe it. It's very stripped. It has a very stripped down look. And it, um, and by all means, for any of those who are, are just getting started or haven't dedicated themselves to a particular recording software, download the free trial of a handful of them and just look at them, kind of fiddle around yeah. with them. What, what, how does it affect you visually? Does it feel like it's going to... Uh, help your workflow you know is it intuitive as we like to say um, so you know all of these things are are to be taken into consideration when you're choosing your recording software I really enjoy you know it's kind of funny because when you're on like your studio computer you might like to use something else like I'm all about Adobe Audition until I'm on the road and I have my iPad and then suddenly I'm like a huge twisted wave fan <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah it's, I it's, love it's, Twisted Wave. Uh, Twisted Wave is almost kind of, in, in a way, it's kind of like the Apple version of Audacity. 
Yeah, I, you know, I've never used it because I'm I'm a I'm a PC guy. Yeah. And it it's it's not available. I don't think it's available for PC. They've been talking it, about it. I think it is now, but it might be in beta. I will have to get some some clarification on that. But I yeah. think you can get it now on both. Okay. So somebody will tell us for sure. It, but it, that that's been said for a long time. I'm not sure. I just haven't heard anything about it. You know, the thing is about about all this software, all these DOS softwares, they all do the same thing. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's how you feel about it. It's I mean, it's going to record audio in a variety of bit rates and a variety of of of, uh, you know, file la- file styles, you know, yeah. and, and as long as you're comfortable using it, use it. And Audis- Audacity has been around forever. So yeah. there's like a billion tutorials out there on any little little tiny thing you want to do on it. You can yeah, find a, a, a YouTube myself. video and, and it shows you exactly how to do it. I didn't even realize until just now that there's a dark theme for, yeah. for Audacity. Oh, yeah, it makes it look that. like it makes it look like Adobe Audition. I'm like, oh, a little oh, look bit. That. That's yeah, my, little my, bit. Compu- my computer's all Darth Vader. It's all like dark Star Wars. Oh, like, I gotta have there, it. There's I no hate bright, bright colors. White yeah, I I hate I, you see, I don't want to work with anything that's gonna cheer me up. <laughs> well, that's because you are, you know, you're from you're the, the dark side one. and, the, the, well, it, you know, with, you're the Sith and the rest of us are, you know, uh, the Sith. yeah, hey, you're you just know what? I like black that. too, man. I like that. I'm going to be called the voiceover Sith. Oh, oh God. No. I got to see if that, <laughs> no, I got to see be, if that domain is available. You'll, you'll Excuse get me. a cease and desist from the big D. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. oh yeah. I think they own the term Sith. Well, I think they own the term cease and desist because I think everyone's gotten a letter at one time in their career. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse Rob and I while uh, we grab our barf bags while Terry becomes the voiceover Sith. <laughs> that would be. Oh my God. Some of the names that people use. I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, you know, I'm I do sure want to go to. Jedi out there. I want to sure go is. to the fabulous. We have a. For those of you listening to voiceover sermons, first of all, thank you for listening. And if you're uh, still listening yeah, at this if point, you're still why? listening, why? I, mean, I, I don't know why you would be, but we are grateful that you are. But Jan did put a terrific post this morning in our voiceover camp group talking about um, I'm just going to read the first line, Jan, and then I okay. want you to finish it because this was brilliantly put together from the first sentence on. You said, as adults, many of us have lost the childlike ability to play. What does that mean in the voiceover business? It means, it means just being able to let go of your inhibitions and use your imagination and try new things for the most part. If somebody is asking you, hey, you know, while we're on this directed session and we've been working on this script, do you think you could pull off maybe some kind of a an ogre voice for it? I mean, I'm just I'm just spitballing here, but sometimes it's, yeah. this will come up, you know. Yeah. That, or they'd say, "Hey, you know, this has been a very serious topic, but we decided, hey, let's play around with a totally over the top read on this." Right. You know, if you can just let go of your inhibitions and go, "Yeah, let's try that." Then that just makes you a more valuable component, a more valuable team player to them. To, to your client, if Absolutely. you can just if you can just go there and just and just relish the opportunity to goof off and have yeah. fun, loosen and, up and goof off and trust what your coach is telling you. I mean, obviously, we're hearing something that would give us you know some type of indication that you could maybe do this. Yeah, totally. And and you know, and even those people that think that oh well, I'm only really going to be going after work in e-learning or you know I medical just, narration exactly or that what, kind of thing. That's exactly the long comment I just made before the podcast. Started. Oh, okay, yeah, I, yeah. I was talking about how the pushback that I get from some of our own students on like animation scripts. Well, I don't want to go into animation. This isn't something I would book anyway. And I understand that frame of mind, but how would you know unless you actually? tried it. I actually worked with somebody years and years ago. His sole purpose of getting coaching, he wanted to be a better a better medical narrator. Really okay. good, really good guy. And we were so bored to tears with the content after about four sessions. We're like, so I threw him a curveball and said, you know what? Let's do some character stuff just to just to play around with something. Yeah. And he ended up literally in the next couple of years booking more character work than he did medical narration. That's super cool. I mean yeah. that's that's the whole point of 
of playing, and that is to learn and stretch and grow and and to let go of those inhibitions, those those adult feelings like we're not supposed to be silly or goofy right. anymore. Yeah, don't you take know? yourself so serious. Take a chance and get out of your comfort zone. Even if you don't end up booking character work, would yeah. you guys agree that practicicing those types of scripts will only help your commercial and narration performances? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, jinx. Yeah. Um, the, the whole point is to, I mean, even when somebody, when I'm working with one of our students in a, in a script workout where we're just working on scripts are acting and they have expressed the interest that they may have in, in e-learning and, uh, you know, other forms of narration. I, I don't want to work on those scripts. They're, I mean, they're fine. That's how I make the, <laughs> that's my bread and butter personally, but that doesn't mean that working on those scripts helps me or maybe not anybody else as an actor and right. even and even in e-learning and other types of narration you can be called upon to to take on the role of multiple characters not just right. the narrator so i just think it's about i love working with commercial scripts all yeah. the time well, yeah. think of yeah. ex think of explainer video too. It's not all medical and corporate narration. You you you, no. you may get an opportunity to actually play a character because there's a lot yeah. of animation in explainer videos. Yeah, and and they're using uh, in many instances they're using more than one voice. There will be the main narrator and then several characters, and you may be called upon to play one of those characters. You know, they might Absolutely. be a farmer, or it might be a doctor, or it might be uh, it might be like what Rob does in his spare time and pole dance. It might be somebody <laughs> like that. Um, oh, so that is thank you for the visual. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow, I appreciate that. That is, oh sorry, uh, Rob. Uh, it takes oh, a lot we, of stretching and flexibility. That is going to be I mean, Embedded. It's a valid athletic sport. I, you know, I'm going to be, that visual is going to be with me for a very long time. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, but, everybody. But I, want, I want to hit you guys with a, a couple of things here. First of all, I do a Facebook ad for VoiceOver Camp um, on a Facebook, and I was wondering if you guys would like to, to, to hear some of the comments that people make. <laughs> oh, God. That people make under the ad. Are you ready? Oh, boy. Yeah. Here we go. I mumble. Is that okay? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> hey, we've, we've got I've done characters guy, that mumble. <laughs> we've got one guy. I was born for this stuff. Awesome. All right. All right. Great. Good passion. Um, All right. That's yeah. awesome. And then he, come, wrong, he comes but, back. Yeah. Um, the only way to be successful is if you have an accent. Uh, that could not be what? further from the truth. You know, it's just, <laughs> wow. it's always interesting when you do Facebook ads for something because you get all kinds of of different comments like here's wow. here's another one i sing rock songs that's great that's gonna <laughs> congratulations <laughs> that, <laughs> have fun with that I, you, you know, know but hey that helps i mean honestly it does if you if, if you if you know how to sing then you know how to speak because you you understand breath control you yep. know how long you can go on a breath of air before you know you start running out of air and you know you know musically where your where your tone is in your voice your yeah. your ears are trained to your vo voice box so it's like yeah having having a background in singing is is a is a definitely a, a plus it's a plus I mean, and it's, it's a not good way necessary, yeah, but it's it a helps. good way to warm up too oh here we go you name the voice i can do it oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, there's some great ones too, but I just, you know how it is when you do a Facebook ad, you do get some rather, you know, eyebrow raising comments. Yeah. yeah. And, and the yeah. fact is that most, unfortunately, most of those people, you know, their, their passion, their interest or whatever you want to call it may be valid, but they're, they, they just don't know what voiceover is. Yeah. And, you just, you have yeah. to get out there and, and, and do the research for sure. But yeah, this yeah. has been great information. Jan Anderson is a fabulous coach on my staff, as is Rob. And I, I only leave our listeners we with are one fabulous. question. Fabulous. If you're not working with us yet, why the hell not? Yeah, see, again, barf bag, anybody? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no. What? No. Um, who signs up gets a free barf bag. Yeah. You guys... They'll need it. <laughs> Isn't it nice to be doing, uh, you know, voiceovers other than COVID PSAs this year? Oh, yeah. I'm so sick you know, of that. 
Yeah. Mine pretty much went away uh, last summer. I, I think I had a I had a big run of them, and then they just all died off, and that yep. was fine. Yeah, there was, <laughs> there was like three months where there there was like nothing but but COVID PSAs. But, I was so. I I've been telling my students like last year the go to voice was the we're with you, we're on oh, your God. side. That's we're what I did for NBC together. Sports. That was a <laughs> huge. I did yeah. a huge yeah. national gig for like for like kids yeah. sports and stuff. You know, yeah, you but, know, going back now, to school and. But now the, the the like the go-to voice that I see a lot of auditions for is the "We're back, doors are open, come oh, yeah. buy our I, crap, yeah, please." Yeah, no, there you know, is it's a that lot kind of, of that. There is a <laughs> lot of that. I mean, that. that's not quite so announcery as I just did it, but you know, it's it's that kind of like, yeah, know, we're back, America. You know, that kind of stuff. And it's it's raw, raw cheerleader. Yeah. Well, we need it, Rob. We yeah. need it right now. <laughs> Please buy our stuff. That, that's Please. Awesome. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much for another fine episode. By the way, if when you're listening right now, you can actually subscribe to our fine podcast via iHeartRadio, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We're on all of those platforms where you subscribe to podcast. If you're interested in coaching with us, you can send me an email, contact at voiceovertraining.info, or you could join our fun uh, voiceover group on Facebook called Voiceover Camp, and you can find that by going to facebook.com slash groups slash voiceovercamp, all one. You'll find it. You'll find it in a search, and we'd love to have you. It's a good place to learn if you're if you're Absolutely. brand new, and we've got you know everybody on my staff, including Jan and Rob, are very candid coaches, and uh, guess what? You don't learn much, and you don't grow from smoke blowers. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Or leaf blowers. But we won't go there. <laughs> well, I learned a lot about leaf blowers. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's... When, when to not record. Yeah, speak, yeah spe exactly. speaking of forums, boy, do voice actors love to talk about how they can't record because their neighbor has their leaf blower out. No, oh, I've been oh, I've been God. guilty of that myself, but oh, yeah. Uh, I, I I yeah I've said my piece about somebody that. I, I don't know who it was. This was a long time ago, but somebody was actually boasting about the fact that they actually walked down the block to the neighbor's house who had the leaf blower out and asked them to stop doing it because they were recording. Would you mind stopping, please? <laughs> because, you know, I have an important e learning <laughs> module I have to record. Because, you know, it's all about us. Yeah. Oh Isn't it? <laughs> Gentlemen, you were fabulous. Thank you for being a part of VoiceOver Sermons. It's a pleasure. All right. Take care, Thanks, guys. Terry. See you, Rob. Thank you for tuning in to the VoiceOver Sermon with Terry Daniel. See you next time for more useful tips and tricks to help make your voiceover business run better.